So, a few days ago, the Zorin OS team released Zorin OS 15.3, which is now based on the Ubuntu 18.04.5 LTS release, which brings with it a you know lot of newer packages. For example, Firefox, LibreOffice, and more are all updated. As well as that, the Zorin OS team have also bundled some of their own stuff into the mix. For example, they've bundled the newest version of their Zorin OS Connect app, which is a program which will let you connect your phone to your computer, and it's a little bit like what Apple have with Handoff and stuff. And uh, that program comes with a variety of security updates and support for the newest Android versions. So all in all I have to say that Zorin OS 15.3 is quite a nice modest point release that doesn't reinvent the wheel midway through the distribution's lifespan. However, as a result of that there is no need for me to re-review the distro for this point release as most of what I said in my old review of Zorin OS 15 still stands. However, I haven't had a look at the light version of Zorin OS yet and I've got to say it looks really nice so I kind of want to. Now, for those who don't know, Zorin OS offers a light version of their distribution, and essentially it's Zorin OS Core, which is their kind of flagship distribution that comes with their custom desktop and stuff, but with the XFCE desktop. Now, the Zorin team claim that it can run on computers as old as 15 years old, and to be honest, I can believe that. XFCE is a pretty lightweight desktop after all. But with all of that said, let's go ahead and fire up a virtual machine and take a look at Zorin OS Lite 15.3 right now on the Linux Lounge. Well, here we are in Zorin OS 15.3 Lite. And I'm gonna be honest, if you told me that this is an XFCE desktop, just looking at this, I probably wouldn't believe you because I've gotta say, this is one of the most stunning out of the box XFCE experiences I have ever seen. You've got a really nice taskbar down here. You've got your usual XFCE menus and that sort of thing. You've got a fantastic icon theme and you've got curved window borders which that looks really really nice and of course you've got the usual really nice Zorin OS GTK theme as well and you know I really have to say this has got to be easily one of the most stunning XFCE implementations I've ever seen and if you don't know how to configure XFCE and that sort of thing well Zorin OS might actually be worth going with just because of how nice the XFC implementation is out of the box as well. And of course in true distro review fashion we've got to take a look at the wallpapers and as you can see they're quite nice. Now before we continue in the review I am slightly curious about something. I want to know what it would look like if we set the transparency on that little panel there so you can get kind of a bit of a Windows look almost because I believe that Windows has some transparency too. And as you can see that, yeah, that looks really nice. So let's go ahead and leave it at that. Now, with that out of the way, the out of the box desktop is really nice, but what are the included applications like? Well, let's go ahead and open up the Zorin OS start menu. As you can see, we've got, I believe this is the whisker menu, but once again, if you told me, I probably would not be able to tell because as I can say, the, you know, the Zorin OS theming is really nice. And actually it's not the whisker menu, it's apparently a custom menu, which good on the Zorin team for developing their own menu. It's really impressive what they're doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the applications that come with this distribution. So under the accessories, you know, you've got all your usual stuff. You've got XFCE programs, which makes sense because this is an XFCE distribution. You've got a selection of games, which seems a little bit unusual, but they do work and they're not taking up a huge amount of space so you know cool to have them under graphics you've got a document viewer you've got the GNU image manipulation program you've got LibreOffice draw you've got an image viewer which looks really nice with the Zorin theme and what have you now I don't know about including the GNU image manipulation program not because it's not a good program but you know, it's taking up quite a lot of space on the ISO, and if you're running a lightweight distribution, I would kind of wonder whether or not you have the need for an image editor. I don't know, it, it, it's not a huge problem, I suppose. And if we keep going, we have internet, so you've got Firefox, you have uh, Remina, I believe that's pronounced, and that is essentially a remote desktop program, so if you wanted to put this on someone's computer, you could, you know, put it on someone's computer who's not super tech savvy, and then you can install Ramin on your computer and remotely connect to their computer to help them out if they need it, which fantastic inclusion, especially for a distribution intended for new users. And of course you've got Thunderbird, 
which fantastic uh, suite of internet programs. I've got to say, I don't know, with this being kind of a distribution aimed more at new users, maybe I would have considered using Chromium instead of Firefox, but also Firefox is far better for privacy reasons and, you know, freedom reasons and, you know, if you're going to switch to Linux, maybe those things are more important to you, so fantastic suite of internet applications. Under, you know, your um, multimedia stuff, you have Cheese, the Parole Media Player, PitV, Pulse Audio Volume Control, and XF Burn. Now, that's pretty standard for XFCE, but I find it slightly interesting that they've decided to include a video editor. Now, PitV is a great video editor, and this is certainly going to be something that's going to impress people coming over from Windows, you know, having all this awesome software out of the box. But I would wonder if perhaps, you know, maybe this is not necessarily bloat, but I also wonder that if you're installing a lightweight distribution, maybe you don't necessarily need a video editor. Although it's entirely possible that this is kind of trying to be one for one, the full Zorin OS experience, just light weight. And if that's what they're going for, well then that's a cool inclusion, but I don't know how useful it'll be. And if we keep going, you've got Office, which you've got the full LibreOffice suite and a document viewer, cool. And under the settings, this is where things start to get kind of cool. It's the usual setting stuff, but if we go into appearance, we can see something that'll be relevant later. You've got all those Zorin OS themes. Now, if we keep going under system, um, actually, I believe it was under settings. Yeah, um, oh, here we are, yep. If we go into settings and click on Zorin appearance, well, here we are in the sort of now this is the kind of flagship feature of Zorin OS, like this is kind of the reason why you pick Zorin OS, like of course other than the fantastic looking desktop. You can very, very easily configure things. Now this of course isn't as configurable as the full version of Zorin OS, but that's to be expected since it's, you know, quite lightweight. Now out of the box you get two layout choices, you've got the one that it comes with by default which looks really nice and modern, or you can go with this where it will give you, you know, a thinner taskbar which might be nicer on low resolution screens and it'll give you more information about you know what applications you've got open and stuff. The um, application menu is the same across both of these though. So I've got to say it's really cool that they've implemented the layout feature in the light version of Zorin OS as well as the full version. It, like, it really does make the light version feel like you're running well a light version of Zorin OS. You can also change where the title bar buttons are which is quite cool. And you've also got a lot of theming options. So for instance, let's say we want to go with a red theme and we want it dark. Well, just like you would in normal Zorin OS, it's very easy to select that. And I've got to say, I find it really impressive how the sort of theme doesn't just take, like change the highlights, it changes absolutely everything. So for instance, as you can see, we've got this sort of amber theme and now everything is amber, not just the icons and stuff. So that's really cool. You can also go in and, you know, have more fine control over things. So, you know, for instance, if you want to install a custom theme, well, you can quite easily change to that. And of course, you can also change the font. Now, if you're a slightly more advanced user or you're used to using XFCE, well, you can still use the usual XFCE appearance tab. So I think this distribution is going to be good for people who quite like XFCE too, or like who are familiar with it. So I've got to say, that's pretty much all there is to this distribution. It's really, really nice, like the way that it's put together. And I've got to say, if you're using all the hardware or you're just someone who prefers XFCE, I would seriously consider giving this distribution a look because it really is one of the nicest XFCE desktops I've ever seen. And you know, if you're like Ubuntu, this is a good choice for you as well because Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu. And I've got to say, I can't wait to see what's coming in Zorin OS 16. But with that said, I think that's all I've got to say about this uh, operating system. I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.